Yo, you're listening to, uh, what's it called? Ben and Brett Talk of the Town. Yo, this is MC Huge, and you're listening to Ben Glaze and his friend Brett with a last name that rhymes show. I don't know. What's it called, Hazed and Glaze? Glaze and Haze. Sup, y'all. They make nuts that hang out of jeans. <laughs> they do? Yeah. Jean nuts. <laughs> For women who want that ball out of the jeans <laughs> See what it's like to go balls out. <laughs> I want to go balls out, but I just don't know how. No, you can't. <laughs> well, we got a big show today. It's a freedom to be yourself and say what you want and know oh. that the intent is good. But if you're just trying to make each other laugh and be giggly, then that then it then it takes all the all the bad away. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, your 22nd favorite podcast is back with another episode. They swore that they'd try to bring you quality product this week, but they failed miserably. It's time for Balls Out with Ben Glees and Brett Hayes. It's so cartoonish yep. and stupid and ridiculous that I'm, I think it's humorous. Yeah, oh yeah. fuck, this is going to be laughs all night. Three, two, one, and... We are recording. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ben? Not much, Brit. So oh, you, man. you watch that Epstein doc? Like, I'm gonna be real honest. I made it through the first two episodes, and I have not watched the third episode yet. I don't blame you. I don't know if it's just because of lack of time or just lack of interest. I've but. just been. I've just been really busy but it wasn't uh, all i was hoping for it was better than uh, you know i was bitching last week i was like it better not be about this pain or blah 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 Uh, it was better than the abc um special that they did oh really yeah that's good at least for sure tell you what a lot a lot of stuff came out of it that i had no clue about yeah seriously it's fucking stupid and it should piss a lot of people off yeah, it uh, it makes me feel bad about the joke I wrote about Epstein <laughs> and all that stuff. Ah, uh, puts things in perspective for you. Yeah, all the women, all the girls. That there was a lot, a lot, a lot of girls. A lot, dude. <sighs> he got away with it. Yeah, for fucking twenty years or whatever. Yeah, it's insane. It is insane, and like just the fact that he could pay people off for whatever he was doing to with like. Oh, nice with um the judicial system or whatever when he was in court yeah like just it's all sketchy man and it's, it's all sketchy the fact that glenn maxwell is still just roaming around it's just like hey, i deny a bird. everything that's it's it such bs I'm done. i deny everything i don't have to deal with it well i think that's also because of the oh no never mind because they made a deal with the the head judge or something like that I, I saw in the second episode and basically got him and anybody in his posse it got them all off for some reason i don't know how or why but pun intended pun intended and that was my 60 second joke <laughs> i don't get how uh like people that were recruiters like glenn maxwell aren't also in trouble. I don't. I don't know if it's uh, a matter of her being in a different country and the U.S. just not having the ability to. No, I mean the 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 younger girls. Oh, the girls that he was using. Yeah, that would get paid two hundred bucks. They were young and didn't know anything, but any better. They didn't know any better, and it. it, it showed that he preyed on kids from like broken households too yeah. so they didn't they literally you know but then there was also that masseuse who like the the long-term masseuse that was older that it seemed <laughs> like she knew what was going on and yet yeah didn't I don't do know. anything i yeah it's all it weird how me, all that uh, kind of money stuff works. money money talks i guess yeah and threatening people talks which, yeah, but just, I don't know. So speaking of 60 seconds of comedy. Then. Uh, <laughs> here, okay, I'm going to go through my writing process with you, okay? 
You didn't do so, it. You did it right. So, so you texted me like, um, I don't know, like earlier in the week, a couple days ago, and you're like, how's that joke coming along? And I'm like, well, you just reminded me that I had a joke to write, so that's how it's coming along. You're going to write one joke for 60 seconds? 60 seconds. Well, that was the thing I thought. Oh, no, it was just 60 seconds of stand-up. Right. It doesn't I mean, have to be one joke. Yeah, but like, do you really want to go in there and tell like, five different jokes in 60 seconds that seems a little a little cluttered to me man that's true i know <laughs> anyways so then i started thinking like oh what can i write a joke about now we're here ben and i i got nothing for you it's kind of what i was expecting just you know i i realized that but anytime okay. you've a- ever asked me for anything i've fallen through and <laughs> i felt like i really had to keep that going yeah no worries. Uh, I will do. I will do one uh, at some point in our lives, though. I'll tell you that much. Just I'm like you'll uh, in the moment. Just like you'll come to one of my comedy shows. I do. I'm going to come to your next show. Like, uh, as it's soon in as July. This COVID shit. Really? You you actually have a date now? There's a there's a place in Holland called the Parrots Lounge that's uh, taking requests for stand up dates. So I'll have a Thursday in July that I get to do it. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool, dude. Congrats. Yeah, I'm excited. It's finally like, I was like, oh man, now I'm actually excited to, like, write again. Whereas before, yeah. I had no. You haven't been writing. No, not at all. But I feel I, like now would be a good time to write. No, there's nothing to write think, about think besides back on your life. Corona shit. I yeah, listen to true. so many comedians on podcasts and radio where they talk about everybody's just in. Uh, Everybody's talking about slump. Corona. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's writing shit right now. I believe it. Like, not even me, though, especially. So, right, exactly. Is, not even I, you. I don't feel so bad anymore. What about this one? Uh, I was on the phone in the bedroom of my new apartment when I found out I was a mistake. In my oh. new apartment, uh, the bedroom doesn't have a closet, which is also a mistake. So all my clothes are in piles on the floor. It's a total mess. I dodged an abortion, no closet. I guess I've always been good at avoiding hangers. Uh, yeah, it's I, it's very like clunky. It's very yeah, it was, clunky. That was a lot going on. I think if you did. How about this boil one? Boil it down a little bit more. I recently got a puppy. It's a corgi. And for my birthday, someone gave me a customized fridge magnet with a picture of a corgi on it. And it says... Life is short. Corgi's legs are shorter, and Ben's dick is the shortest. <laughs> Thanks, <All right>. Dad. <laughs> uh, my dad's. Thanks, Dad. My dad's always given interesting gifts, like when I was a kid, and he gave me the gift of a broken home. <laughs> uh, when that happened, he said, "Ben, just remember, you are not the reason for mommy and daddy's divorce. Your sister is." <laughs> I like it, dude. I would, uh, I would go with that one over the F scene. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Or I've got, the way uh, you did it, I can see how you do more jokes in sixty seconds. So that I think you spaced it out well enough, though. It was good. Um. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> I'll do this last one and then I'll be done. Let's see how, what you think about this one. My dad raised me Catholic, and as a Catholic, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. But I can't help that Father Joe ruined that for me. <laughs> no, I like but, it. but for real, I found articles about family friend Father Joe that said he would give kids haircuts that led to full body massages. Thank God I started balding early. <laughs> hey, okay. Hey, okay. I like it. All right. See now, look at you. You're acclimating. You are, you're getting woke right now, Ben. That's, I'm getting, so proud of you. Getting woke. What is? How am I getting woke? You're just, you know, you're adjusting. That's all I'm saying. You're adjusting. Right. That's that's what I like to see out of you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Not really. Oh. You know what, Brett? Yeah. Is I want to know this. I've been thinking about it all week. I want to know, is jerking off to nudes of a girl who has died weird or a nice tribute? (laughs) 
Uh, uh, I like that one. I like that joke. But that's not a joke. That's a question from. You could easily make that one a from fucking Anne's great joke. Box dude. of questions. I think you. Could, oh, okay. You can't steal it. Um. Wait. What was the What was the question again? A tribute or what? Uh, or just weird. I think it's tribute for sure. I think it's. Both. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure both of us have watched plenty of porns where the girl in it has probably passed on. Actually, there was a porn star that killed herself that I I, I yeah. stopped watching, and I I wouldn't watch anything of hers anymore because it weirded me out. Oh, it's, so okay. to me, I guess weird. Yeah. To me, tribute for sure. Yeah. Make a like, shrine. Uh, rest in peace. Oh yeah. Money <laughs> shot. That was a great drop, man. Oh, thank you. You are welcome. I'll keep them coming. Just like uh your tribute porn. Uh, or are you, man? <laughs> uh uh-huh. you don't have you don't happen to have Reddit open, do you? Um easily, <laughs> yeah. What's up with it? I'm not you're uh well i just what there was a pretty oh, big yeah. uh, debate about standing while wiping yes you want me to read it yeah sure because uh okay, you- i'm i'm one of the people that likes to stand and wipe well as somebody puts it in the in the reddit squat and wipe right uh just question you did hit record on the recorder right yes i did the number nice the numbers are red <laughs> okay, uh, this comes from um, user Bert's Kurtz. Hmm. I feel like that's a new, new I redditor. I've heard that. I've heard that before. Uh, okay, the title is "I Stand While I Wipe." He says, or she says, the classic debate of sitting versus standing to wipe your bum was the discussion on the latest Easter egg uh, from last week. Was it last week? Uh was no, ten it was days ago. Before. So it was two weeks uh-huh. ago. Okay. Uh, I'm not afraid to say I stand to wipe. In fact, Sneaky people who butter. sit and lean to wipe should be embarrassed that they're even reaching their hand into the danger, into the danger zone that is the immediate area, area above chaos. And then uh, Illinois Justin. Yeah. great. Minus the fact that he's from Illinois. Um, yeah, seriously. Boo. Boo. He says, do you actually stand or uh, just get off the seat a little bit and like a squat? I think the debate is skewed because when it comes that someone stands, we have an image of a of well, a guy standing. All right, parentheses or not parentheses, commas. We need some grammar, okay? In this, Illinois, <laughs> Justin. This poop. Oh man. Um, but then we talk, and it's actually I just raise up and wipe my butt. There Completely you go. Different argument. I don't think anyone really stands. If you actually stand, how does it work? Do you take one hand and hold your ass cheeks open and then get in there with the other hand? Or do you just slide the TP between your naturally clenched cheeks and hope you got it? Oh, no. I uh, hold with the left hand, wipe with the right. You got to hold your ass. I hold I hold my cheeks up. Oh, you're, you're a stander, aren't you? Not yeah. full stand. No, squat. You're a stander. <laughs> um, if you stand, you, just... you squish, you mush it all together like a peanut yeah. butter sandwich. Right. You're a stander. So, or do you just dig up in there? The, the natural gravity of your ass while standing does not leave your hole open for wiping. As for sitting, do you think someone puts their hand, wrist facing down deep into a bowl, almost grazing shit, and then wipes? It's, <laughs> if so, no, that's not right at all. It's a simple lean away from your dominant hand and a wipe with your hand just maybe barely penetrating the giant hole in the seat. If your junk does not touch waste in the bowl, then there is 0% possibility it can be done wiping with your hand. Leave it to the bathroom behavior to get comments on this podcast. I said, you're raising extremely good points here. Uh, If this guy fully stands, then he's the weird one. You said, sounds like a discussion for this week. Uh, Then uh, some light erotic frisking, as does Meathead. This was discussed a couple weeks ago. Oh, we're stealing from uh, Zane here. And then Bert's Turt uh, oh said, well, since you brought it up, it is more of a squat. And then Illinois responded, no beef with popping a squat. It works in the forest and fine when you got nowhere to go. And you get some bonus hamstring workout. <laughs> nice. 
I'm more of a leaner. I'm not. I don't. I always keep. I don't understand the lean because I don't. I don't stand like you. I I lean and I let the the seat hold my butt cheek. Yeah. See, I do that with instead my of hand. my hand. But then yeah. I'm easily able to check to make sure everything is you know clean as a whistle at the end. Whereas I feel like if you're a leaner, there's a possibility you're gonna wipe what's on there on your leg or on your cheek. Oh. As you pull it out to take a look, or do you just don't look? You just trust I, that you're dude, good. you don't look, you just do it. Ah. And if you gotta use a couple extra handfuls of uh, a couple extra pieces of toilet paper and you know. you clean your ass. <laughs> you spoke too soon, you said handfuls. Oh no! I use my hand usually, but I'm saying for you, if you want to use toilet paper, <laughs> I just use my hand. Okay, like a man. And then I, I always just take a shower right after any time I poop. So I usually just poop at home. That's a lot of or, showering. Or wherever um, you know, there's a shower. I only poop once a day. Oh well, I go a lot, especially now that I'm yeah. drinking espresso. I'll go you like a lot four times before I have lunch. That doesn't sound right. But I I pee way more than you do probably, so I guess that yeah. evens out. Yeah, I've been peeing out my ass because of the espresso. Oh my! And then, like every day. <laughs> you will, yeah. Is it? It's a constant thing. Oh yeah. Diarrhea. Maybe you shouldn't do that. It's uh. <laughs> pretty gross. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that. Hey, live your life, man. YOLO. YOLO. Can you tell that television in the background to shut the f- up? What television? I heard somebody yelling in the background. Oh, that's just crazy. me. Oh. <laughs> you got articles, dude? You want to do news, news, news? Yeah, I saw you uh, You uh, had, a, had a little... Yeah. Uh, I got a little yeah. update. You want me to read it quick? Or yeah, do you want to sure. do a story? Um... Let's see. I can. Oh well, we got to talk about the famous news from this week. Federal judge in Oklahoma on Monday ruled the 16 acres containing the Greater Winwood Exotic Animal Park must be surrendered to Big Cat Rescue Corp within 20, uh-huh. 120 days. So Carol that means. Yeah, she's getting Joe Exotic Zoo. Which I don't... uh, I'm a little confused on because I thought that that other guy bought Joe Zoo. Okay, yeah, this is where we go. Uh, So, in 2013, Big Cat Rescue was awarded, uh, let's see, $1 million in a trademark infringement lawsuit against Exotic. Obviously, that's when he named his, like, Big Cat Rescue whatever instead of Corporation. Yeah. And then the, he transferred the zoo property to his mother, who then was sued in 2016 by Big Cat Rescue. In a summary judgment, yeah. uh, it was ruled that the transfer to Exotic's mother was fraudulent and intended to keep the property out of reach of Carol Baskins. Monday's ruling requires the operators, um, let's see, which is Jeff Lowe and his hot-ass wife, uh, to leave and remove all the animals. It said that about Jeff Lowe's hot-ass wife in there? Yeah. Yeah, that's what the judge said. That he ruled, Wait, so rip- he ruled that she was a hot-ass wife, ordering the court. So what? If, sorry, you got to repeat what they actually did. What they actually do? So what Jeff Lowe say? and his wife bought or owned the zoo. Yeah. After Exotic went to jail, but because Exotic transferred the zoo to his like uh, to his mother or put it mm-hmm. in his mother's name, that's fraudulent. And now because of that, they're able to take the zoo from the, that i don't know it's all confusing sucks, sucks yeah. for him a i'm sure that guy probably deserves it his wife is hot but yeah um 
Yeah, because I know that, like, in the last episode of Tiger King, he was, or uh, some video I saw online or whatever, he was building the new, a new zoo for all the animals. Oh, yeah. At least so making it gotta, there, yeah. Doing something. Wow. Do you think that um, her husband's death will now, like, actually, like, things will go in full swing about that? Like, they might actually they're trying it more they're trying but i don't know exactly what else they can find at this point there's got to be somebody out there i don't know i feel like it'd be great well obviously all the tigers that ate his ass up are probably dead by now or put to death yeah whatever Now, did you say you have an update, or do you have, or was it yeah, just I got an update? Straight? Okay. Do you uh, remember the Netflix documentary about little Madeline McCann? Who's? Oh, yes. Little girl. The parents literally left wherever the little girl was. I think she was just up in a room in a yeah. She was in, in the hotel, hotel room sleeping, and her parents went with the other couple that they were with uh, just down by like the pool area where there's a restaurant to have dinner. Yeah. And then when they came back, she was just gone. Yeah. And they like thought the parents did it for forever. Yeah. They always, they had a couple people that they accused a couple suspects, but they never solved it or anything. So I saw on dailymail.com today, Police will search an abandoned box factory in Germany where the prime suspect in the Madeleine McCann case lived in a caravan shortly after a five-year-old girl vanished nearby in 2015. It was revealed today. Huh. Prosecutors have reopened the investigation into whether Christian Bruckner abducted Inga Garica after she was dragged, uh, grabbed from, oh gosh, Diakonivirk Wilhelmshof in Saxony-Anhalt during a family <laughs> outgoing five years ago. Her disappearance on May uh, 2nd, 2015, almost eight years to the day after Madeline vanished in Portugal on May 3rd, 2007, was only 48 miles away from where Bruckner lived on the ramshackle five, anc- five acre in the isolated uh, village of Neuwegersleben, uh, southeast of Hanover. More than 100 officers Descended on the old box factory in, in February 2016, digging holes looking for Inga's body. The little girl wasn't found, but Bruckner's USB stash of child sex abuse images was found on a USB stick hidden under animal uh, animal bones. With yeah. That was the title. With uh, police now set to return, according to German tabloid build. Bruckner was po- prosecuted over the child porn, but he was never charged with Inga's disappearance when the probe was dropped after four weeks. But today, prosecutors confirm they have reopened a preliminary investigation into whether he was involved in the unsolved Inga case. Can you imagine if uh, in all that child porn, there was a picture of Matt? It, it's Madeline, right? Yeah. Yeah. If there's a picture oh, yeah, of her that'd on be there. nuts, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, they have a little list of all the events that happened with him. Uh, came as documents revealed by Spiegel allegedly showed Bruckner fantasized in discussing an online chats about the kidnapping and sexual abuse of a child in September 2013. He's said to have told one acquaintance, acquaintance he wanted to capture something small and use it for days. Ew. Oh, God. And that it would be safer if the evidence is destroyed afterwards. <sighs> As police try to gather the evidence to charge him with Madeline McCann's abduction, it also emerged today. Bruckner is currently... Oh. Oh, here's a, they're just bullet points. Bruckner is allegedly going to be eligible for parole this weekend, having served two thirds of a sentence for drug charges at Kiel prison in Germany. The mystery caller who spoke with Bruckner minutes before Madeline was abducted has been named as some dude by Portuguese media. More details of the uh, sex abuse has emerged, including a sex attack on a nine-year-old girl and exposing himself to a six-year-old girl. Yeah. Madeline's parents have been encouraged by the results of the latest appeal with Scotland Yard already receiving more than 270 calls and emails. A friend who lived with, uh, lived above his shop claims he was violent, beating up his underage Kosovo, a uh, girlfriend and cruelly locking up his dogs and shops for a week. Bruckner is said to have had a relationship with an unnamed British woman while living in, uh, 
Playa del Luz in 2017 or 2004. Bruckner is currently behind bars in Germany, living 21 months for uh, dealing drugs. This, this article is a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> Can you imagine being those parents and, like, let's say you've kind of gotten over it at this point, and then now all of a sudden, so many years later, there's a glimmer of hope that you might find out exactly who did it? I would be ecstatic. A, you'd never get over it, but... Um, but at this point, so you gotta ass- you got to assume that the girl's dead, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But uh. anyway, so this guy was, you know, just the reason that he... Or that he's the biggest suspect in this is because he supposedly told somebody that he, you know, wanted to do that around that time. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know, maybe he'll uh, admit to it, but you never know. So people are just stupid and, and admit to fucking stupid crimes. Yeah, you s- or they slip up and... Goodness. Yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah. That was a good, but not great documentary. Yeah, definitely not great at all. But it got boring at parts, but still. Gosh, I <sighs> I need a new documentary. I mean, besides the Epstein one, a new one to sink my teeth into. Um, have you watched the, the improv thing yet with Ben Schwartz? I have not. Dude, set a reminder or something. You got to watch that. Why have you watched oh, more of it and it's amazing? No, I've just... Oh. Just, I really want you to watch it because it's the funniest thing I think I've ever seen. Uh, have you seen Solar Opposites? Solar Opposites? No. That's that Hulu yeah, it's, show? It's a Hulu show. It's like Rick and Morty. Okay. I did uh, I did start watching Space Force. I watched a few episodes of that. I watched that whole thing. Did you like it? I did. What you saw? Um, it's good. It's not great, but it's definitely good. And I'd I'd be excited for them to keep going after the season. I was yeah. surprised when I found out that Carell and Greg Daniels, and <laughs> not Free Beer, but uh, right, <laughs> uh, Greg is Greg again. Who created The Office? That they created this, and then yeah, and co-wrote yeah. it. So I just thought of a series you can watch on Netflix that I watched. Oh, and the cast um, is great in the show oh dude john malkovich oh yeah. my god yes ben schwartz like we just talked about i couldn't believe um, lisa kudrow was in it. oh dude she was funny did they ever spoiler did they ever say why she was in jail no it goes like, from episode one to episode two where she's right. not in jail to she's in yeah. jail and they never say that. and then like she hints that she might be in there for a long time but yeah they never yeah. they never say That's, why all they said about it. You think that was intentional? Yeah, I believe so. Why? Why? To keep Why? you guessing. <sighs> to make people Damn. like this, to make people like us be like, well, what the hell had just happened? How did she get in there? You win this one, Steve Carell and Greg Daniels. I wonder if it's going to be some big funny, re- like maybe they have some big funny reveal planned oh, yeah, later I'm on. Sure. That show's definitely going to have a good good amount of seasons i guarantee that oh yeah but yeah john malkovich but, is the bomb in that show <laughs> yeah he's he's funny um yeah i thought of a series you can watch oh and jin yang from silicon valley isn't it yeah he is funny yeah he's funny all right i thought of, I thought of a series you can watch Ben. okay should i go off on another tangent to keep your- yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's called uh it's more of a serious one. It's called White Lines. Okay. Uh, this girl goes to Ibiza um, and oh. is trying to figure out who killed her brother 20 years ago. Okay. And it's it's entertaining because you get you get to see a little bit of the lifestyle of, of Ibiza, but it's a makes lot you of guess drugs and, and sex. Yeah, drugs, sex, and murder. And DJ music. DJ Khaled. Yeah. Did we just describe our awesome podcast, actually? <laughs> I actually have that damn air horn on the drop machine. Do you? Nice. Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool story, bro. 
You got any? Like you said, you had a, a okay. plethora of stories. Let's hear them. I've got a I've got a sweet. Wait, hack. Give, me, give me one of those. I I sent you one through the email. Give me one of those. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, you always give me the two pagers. Yeah, I look on the the show email that nobody ever emails. You mean the one that I sent to myself? No, there's another one. But while you're doing that, oh, for Brett to read, you sent this to me Monday. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Uh, thanks, baby. Um, oh, dude, I, you always give me the two pagers, though. <laughs> See, Domino's has a hack for uh, making it so you don't have soggy pizza for leftovers. Put a glass of water in there with it. You son of a bitch! Yeah, that's that's it. You know what my hack is? Warm up the what? oven to three fifty and put it in there for ten minutes. You want to know what my like hack it's is? Brand new. What's that? Eating it cold because I ain't no fucking pussy. <laughs> okay. Jesus, you fucking my millennials and your your avocado it's toast alive. and your fucking reheated pizza. I'm a real man. I You're just eat it raw. Eat it raw, baby. I like everything raw. It's not raw. It's already been cooked. This is day old pizza we're talking about. No, I know. <sighs> wow. <laughs> These are trying times right now. Yes. So trying that a mother <coughs> and a son got into a fight. Ooh. The cops in Pennsylvania got a call last week about a domestic dispute. And when they got there, they found a 41-year-old woman had gotten into an argument with her 20-year-old son. Sounds like you and your parents. Uh, because guess why? Because she did doesn't. disconnected the Wi-Fi. That's a problem you guys have. Okay, fine. He was so upset that he cut the power to the entire house. Then they got into a physical fight. The mom, the son, and the son's girlfriend... All got citations for harassment. I don't know where the girlfriend comes in. She's not in the rest of the story. Well, she probably was just that crazy girlfriend that she, and she's like egging him on. Like, yeah, you get her. You get her. <laughs> no, no, you don't pull my hair. Plus, that story was super, super, super uh, short. It's like, let go of my purse. I don't know you. All right, here you go. If you were dating a 10, but at night she turned into a hideous creature... Would you still date her? Man, I'm already dating a 10. Ooh. Um, what was the second part? If uh, So she's a 10 during the day, but at night she turns into this hideous creature. Would you still date her? Definitely I would, yeah. Hells yeah. You can fuck her during the day. <sighs> I was thinking more personality is what I, what I go for. but Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're, yeah. One of, you're not a shallow guy. I try not to be now. Gonna get but damn man, I got I got lucky with a ten, man. <laughs> you gonna get back into that dating pool anytime soon? Uh, I don't know, probably not. You gonna do online dating once you're uh, moved out oh, into your dude, new apartment? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on fucking goodlookingpeople.com again or whatever. It's Beautiful called. people. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, resubmit that application. There you go. Probably get some pictures done professionally. Oh, dude, I did. Yeah. It was only like 50 bucks. Really? Yeah. Can you uh, maybe hook me up with your person? I can I can see about that. Uh, I don't know where I'd take them, though. I did, really it at, uh, I did it at Long Road Distillers or Distillery. Oh. They have an upstairs where there was nobody, and it's like meant for big parties and stuff, like a VIP lounge. Yeah, I like your pictures. I like that. Thank you, that sir. Hard wood feel you got. Oh yeah, you like the hard uh, wood. You, you want me to read this thing? I got, I got a quick, quick one. Oh, do you want to do the judge one? Or you want me to? Oh, you just read the top one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was like did you guys. Did that was like ten thoughts. Yeah, in like ten <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I got a. Uh, do you drink regular milk or do you drink some weirdo milk like coconut or oat milk or almond milk? Oh, fuck people that drink that shit. I drink regular milk. Of course. Thank you. As we found out throughout this whole podcast. Straight from the teeth. Straight from Ben's mom's teeth. You're a man's man. You wipe with your hand. You eat hand? F- cold pizza. 
and you drink regular milk. I'm a man. Yeah. Now you're a man. I'm a man, man, man. Well, it's a good thing you're a man because a 35-year-old guy in Massachusetts went to a grocery store last week and someone saw him taking containers of almond milk off the shelves, Ooh. opening them up, and peeing in them. What? Then he put them back on the shelves and took off. Why? I don't know. A security guard got his license plate number, and the cops arrested him the next day uh, for attempting to poison. Uh, there's no word on why he decided to pee in the almond milk. Now, did, do you think he's like uh, he took out a bunch, opened them up, and then he, you know, just peed down a line, or is he peeing one in one, one, putting it back on the shelf, taking another one off, and then stop? He stops holding his pee in, and then goes into the other yeah. one. Yeah, I ah, think I that's think a lot that of control. Way might, might be less suspicious. That guy probably does a lot of kegels to be able to yeah, do you that. Got, <laughs> You gotta really pinch that penis hard if you don't want oh, yeah. to go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> pinch that penis. I don't know. Hard. I think like weird ass stories like that has to be people that are fucking high on drugs. I was surprised I some, he was from Massachusetts some, and not I did from some Florida. Stupid shit when I was high on drugs, but like never something like that. But yeah. you're just completely out of control of what you're doing sometimes and I drink all the milk. Hey man, you, I go go tell that guy, you know, m- m- go get some help. <laughs> I'm not a man's man because I drink almond milk with my espresso. Yeah, but like, and if you're just gonna have a glass of milk at dinner or something like oh, that, almond hypothetically, milk. dude, you're a fucking asshole. It's so much sweeter. It's, Why? It's such tastier milk. How do you even get the fucking milk out of them then? I don't know, but I get this. I get this vanilla almond milk with a bit of honey in it, and it's just delicious. Dude, you are really pissing me off right now. (laughs) Ah, yes, yes. Who wants flavored milk? Like, I I understand if you're going to have an espresso every day. No, it's just got some sweetness to it. Like, no, why do you need sweetness? Just drink a soda if you want fucking sweetness. No, it's either either going to be almond milk or it's going to be chocolate milk. Or strawberry. I like strawberry milk too. Chocolate I'm milk is fine. Strawberry milk is fine. Okay. Oh, because I thought you were going to give me grief about strawberry milk. No, those are fine. But like almond milk, it's not even fucking plausible. You can't even do it. That's why it sucks. Oh, I love it. I love the shit out on, of it. Dude. Just stop talking about this, please. <laughs> All right. Give me that judge story. No, I'm at you. And I'll. Sp- I'm going to do it in Australia today. That's right, mate. All right, an Australian man accused of breaking into the wrong house. Crikey. As he sought to, as he sought to fulfill another man's sex fantasy, has been found not guilty. His what fantasy? Uh, another man's sex fantasy. Ooh. He was trying to fulfill another man's sex fantasy, but... Would you, would you, feel, nah, okay, nah, if I, if I was the man that had this sex fantasy and I asked you to fulfill it, would you do it? Would you duck? Definitely, definitely dependent on what that fantasy is, but yes, I would do anything for you. Well, we're about to find out what that sex fantasy is. Take is us, it in the story? Take us on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey. On Thursday, a judge in New South. Wales cleared Terence Leroy of charges stemming from an incident last July where he was one of two men hired to carry out a stranger's sexual fantasy of being tied up Leroy while, Jenkins <laughs> of being tied up while clad in his underpants. Yeah. What's clad, what's clad in his underpants mean? Like that's all he's wearing. That's all he's wearing. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of a stupid way to say that, but the yeah. problem is Leroy and his partner went to the wrong house. Son of a bitch. Uh, oh, no. Maybe that was part of the fantasy, though, going to the wrong house. <laughs> I don't think so. Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah. Uh, the case of mistaken identity began after a man in western, <laughs> north, south, west, okay, wait t- near Griffith. Wait till you hear this next part, because like this is... 
it's crazy how the the stars align for this scenario to happen. Okay. The case of mistaken identity began after a man living um, in this place near Griffith went on Facebook looking for someone willing to tie him up and then rub a broom handle under his underwear. Ooh. Quote, he was willing to pay $5,000 if it was really good. <laughs> I will. I'm Ooh. in, man. This is what you would do for me? I am in, dude. If that's what you want. <laughs> fuck yeah. Five grand to scratch you with a broom on the dick? Yeah. No, you don't uh, scratch me. I don't want it to hurt you. You're just going to rub it. You're just going to massage. Yeah, whatever. It's a broom. It's going to scratch. It's Aww. got bristles. Bro. I don't want to get splinters. <laughs> You're not, it's not wood bristles. It's the broom splinters. handle, not the actual broom. Oh, the broom handle. <laughs> I was using the other end the whole yeah, time. No. I know. Wow. Yeah. First the wrong house, now the wrong end. Jesus. Yeah, seriously. Uh, anyways, a police officer testified that the man who hired Leroy and an, uh, another ide- unidentified man had a history of proclivity for uh, engaging the services of people. After finding two people willing to engage in the role-playing fantasy, he sent his address to him. But on the day the fantasy was to take place, Leroy and his partner showed up at the wrong house on the client's street. Okay, here's here's where the stars have had to align. Okay, I'm glad that you said that earlier as well. Yeah, I know, I thought uh, it was home- coming up. <laughs> <laughs> the home's occupant, who was on his way to use the bathroom, Idiot. heard noise and assumed it was a friend who came by each day to make coffee. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Don't say anything. Mr. Hayes, Leon Hendricks, News 8. I just played uh, the the Mr. Hayes drop. Oh, nice. That's me. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, the victim yelled out, Bug off, it's too early. <laughs> but turned on his nightlight after hearing someone ask if he was the name of the man waiting for the kinky role play. Yeah, get in your underwear and get ready for this broom, bitch. <laughs> yeah, why are you uh, laying down on the ground all tied up yet? The victim then turned on a light and saw two men carrying machetes standing next to his bed. Uh, after the victim spoke his own name, Leroy and his colleague realized the error had started to leave. According to the court documents, one of them said, sorry, mate. The other shook the victim's hand and said, bye. Why do they okay. have machetes? Awkward. Uh, maybe they were going to, like, kill this guy and eat him? <laughs> oh, God. I didn't think that was part of the, the fantasy. I thought it just involved uh, a broom, not machetes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, but, but, but then they drove to the correct address while the man they left behind ca- contacted the police. Police eventually showed up, found the machetes in the car, and charged Leroy with entering a home intended to intimidate while armed with an offensive weapon. Grant ruled that the prosecution had not proved Leroy intended to intimidate. During the trial, Leroy's attorney, attorney successfully argued that the whole mishap, as he told the court, <laughs> arose from a commercial disagreement to tie up and stroke a semi-naked man in his underpants with a broom. Finn. <sighs> so good. We got we to uh, come up with a title from that one. Oh, I've got it. Wrong, wrong, oh, you do? wrong house, wrong end. Nice. Uh, like that. You know what's funny about that clip of uh, where it says it's knocking and then it says Mr. Hayes? Yeah. It says it's it's Leroy. I know you're in there. It, it couldn't work out more perfectly because the guy. What did it is, say? It says Leroy. I, it's it's Leroy. I know you're in there. Oh, oh yeah. So that it does make sense. And the guy's name is Leroy. Oh, sure. I, haven't, uh, I haven't heard that in, in a while. And for anybody listening... <sighs> Who's not understanding this? I can't hear the way that we're recording. I can't hear his drops. So, well, hopefully soon because everything's starting to open up, and I'm trying to push for us to record in person. Yeah, but you know that right after everything opens up, like all the dumb people are going to go out there first. So I'm just letting that happen, uh, and then we'll meet up. So two weeks. A pussy fish. A pussy fish. A the puss. A pound the puss. Um. So there's a woman in West Virginia and uh, whose husband Mama. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Don't you roll, Did you know the people that wrote that song had never even been to West Virginia? That it was original I guess. Or no, I don't even know if it was John Denver that wrote yeah, the maybe song. Maybe it's not John Denver original, but he But uh, it, it was about a different state, but then West Virginia just fit better. Just like rhymed with the words better or something. 
Yeah, well, since rhyme, you know, maybe it, not Ryan. But. Yeah, West Virginia rhymes with Country Road very well. <laughs> <laughs> Man, where you go to school? <laughs> uh, so yeah, a West Virginia woman and her husband faked her disappearance by pretending she plummeted from an overlook as part of a scheme to keep her out of having to go into prison. Oh no! Julie and Rodney were arrested Tuesday. State police <laughs> said. Name. Yeah, seriously, Rodney. <laughs> Rodney, what? State police said Julie was reported missing Sunday by her husband and 17-year-old son. Old bitch. Uh, the family claimed Julie had fallen from the main overlook uh, at National Park. Ooh, they were uh, camping, sounds like. Authorities searched for Julie for days but found her Tuesday alive and well, hiding in a closet in her home. Why would she be hiding in the closet? Oh, maybe if authorities came and she's trying to. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I like how you I was, like, asked the question the whole time and then she's sitting... solved it immediately. <laughs> I was the whole time she's sitting in her closet for like a week. Oh, I hope they don't. And come then she today. looked out of the closet. Oh God, that oh yeah, R. Kelly. And then she got peed on in the closet. Have you watched that Surviving R. Kelly at all? That's right, Wade. Oh, that's a that's what I should watch. I want to. I said I want a documentary to sink my teeth into. I should watch Surviving R. Kelly since it's you on should. Netflix. You should. Have you watched it? A box of robots. What? Have you watched no, Surviving no, R. Kelly? No, I haven't. I'm not interested. <sighs> I'm gonna watch that one. No. It's uh. Let's see. It's unclear if the son. Oh wait, hold on. Rodney and his son planted items at the overlook to fake Julie's disappearance. Jeez. So they better get in trouble too. It's unclear whether the son will actually face charges. That's called being an accessory, man. Yeah, seriously. Like, come on. See, that's what that's where my uh question came in with the Epstein thing with the girls that were recruiting girls. Yeah. Accessory. Oh, yeah, right. Julie pleaded guilty and to federal health care fraud in February. Wait, where did this come from? After an investigation into quote-unquote pill mill clinic operations. Oh, she was, she was doling out pills. Mm-hmm. It's unclear whether the couple have an attorney who could comment on their behalf. She'll be sent no, to... They, ch- they probably got to get a, a fucking state-appointed one. <laughs> this is all... Yeah, it seems like Julie's getting in trouble, but the husband and the son aren't. Well, Julie should definitely now get double trouble, toilet trouble, or bubble, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Because she is uh, doling out fucking mad pills, so. Yeah. And then acting like she is dead. Would you do that? If you got in a lot of trouble for, like, embezzling money or something, or whatever. I'm hot in a hand closet. Watch my whole family do things. <laughs> Hope my dog doesn't bark at the closet. <laughs> Give me a way. If he does, I closet. got a little peanut butter. Uh, would you rather fuck a down to fuck six? You didn't answer my question. Yet. Or have a fifty percent chance with a nine? What was your question? Would you would you fake your death if you did something really bad? Or oh yeah. Hmm. I'd have to figure out a good way to do it and then figure out where the hell I'd go. Possibly if it was if if I accidentally like killed somebody, then yeah, that might be a possibility. If you accidentally killed somebody, you are better off just saying that you accidentally killed them. I don't know. Look at OJ. <laughs> he didn't kill anybody. No, he definitely killed. No, he Nicole didn't. Nicole Simpson. And, no, he uh, was not ever prosecuted. Face. Dude, he has Whatever. to. He was. Uh, he has to pay for their murders. Like he's um, monetarily responsible for their deaths. Well, because he's famous and rich. He did. Dude. It. He did it. Okay, I, I honestly, I'm just joking, and I believe you. I'm right on on board with you. It was a bad example, anyways. It was a shit, a really shitty example. Like, really, really bad. Would you fake your own death? No. No? 
You'd just deal would, with the consequences? I would own up to it because I'm a man. I'm a fucking man. Yeah. That's the, the running uh, theme of this episode. I'm going to take that back, actually. What? Uh, you're not a man? That my, no, my, my answer. Oh, you're... Depending, <laughs> on, depending on how much money I have and how far ahead of time that I know I'm going to get caught, Ah. Uh, I would definitely probably go to a different country or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. I would if yeah. I was loaded, if I was loaded. But right yeah. now, definitely couldn't do it. Wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, I'd probably not fake your own death, but definitely get out of the country. I mean, look yeah. at look at Glenn Maxwell. She's out of the country and not being charged with anything. She's just living, living the high life. Why is it that women always get away with things? I don't know. Double <laughs> double standard. Yeah, right. They 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 don't get paid as much, but they get away with everything. All right, let's stop now. <laughs> Unless it's a divorce and they get paid way more. Oh yeah, they always want the fuck. They win everything. Even if a woman cheats and she's the reason for the divorce, she's going to win in court and get alimony. It's bullshit. The court system is bull. <laughs> so Man. back to my question: Would you rather fuck a down to fuck six or have a fifty percent chance with a nine? What was my my percentage with the six? Oh, it's a hundred percent. Oh, she's DTF. I'll go with the six. I'm I'm all about that personality, you know. I, I I've done enough uh, of that in my life. I think I would go for the fifty percent chance with a nine and try to win her over with my comedic oh, personality. That's nice. I'm definitely settling with my six though for sure. Because if I have a fifty percent chance, but then I'm funny, I feel like. Yeah, that that might increase my odds, and I might slip in there. A lot of people have different definitions of funny, you know. Yeah, I know. Mine is uh not good. <laughs> <laughs> I like yours. I like yours. Ah, oh, boy. Mm. Um, well, I am at the Ben Glahays. <sighs> I'm at the Brehen Glahays. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I don't know if you saw on Patreon. I put up a uh, link. I now have where anywhere you can get podcasts, you can get my music mixes. Wherever you download apps, you can get your music mixes. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, let me see that. I want to see it. Not that really. Oh. There's only like a few people that actually give a shit about it, but just so they know. Well, I want you to know that I care. Well, thank you, okay. Brett. I, I really appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. I'm at the Bre- Bre- the Brehenkla Hayes. Hey, does it bother and... you if a girl you're dating makes more money than you? No. No, no, no. Yeah, definitely not me either. I'm Definitely not. We work, well, you work in radio. I want to work in radio. You're not mm. going to make much money, so you got to kind of hope you end up with a girl that makes more money than you. Exactly. Like, woman, let me live out my dreams while you, you know, exactly. slave away at work. Yeah. As long as she's making like a decent amount more than me, I'm still I'm cool with that. Oh yeah. If she's if she's making more than me and it's like close to what I'm making, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Same here. It's like, come yeah, on, was, bitch, are you even trying? It's like <laughs> I, I'm dating you for your your money right now. And, <laughs> you know, the space in between my bank account and yours is it's pretty it's pretty close. <laughs> uh, you better step up your game, or I'm gonna just gonna find a sugar mama. Ooh, would you ever do that? Uh, yeah, I definitely would. If would you I could care about her, her looks if she was, you know, giving you a lot of money? What all is she into? Like you, we have to oh, do you just it. Gotta, you got to take her out for, for your, uh, on dates and you got to fuck the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it would depend on the money then the amount of money you're making, uh, 500 bucks a night with her 500 bucks a night (sighs) then yeah i guess at a boy i'm so i i make so little that 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 would she's that's all right she's she's 400 pounds has a mustache oh god no and she's giving you one no she's giving you one thousand dollars an hour no thousand bucks an hour no that's so gross I'd do it for a dollar an hour, bro. Oh. No. 
I love women with mustaches. <laughs> you look at one every time you look in the mirror. Ooh. Oh, I'm a female. Hi. Sorry, Nick, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap this thing up. See y'all uh, next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's let's uh yeah let's see each other next week. Oh, okay. We'll do that. And the peeps. And the peeps. We'll see all that. Well, they'll see us maybe. The gl- yeah. the glahazers. The glahazers. That's us. No, no, that's our peeps. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool. I'm glad we got that straightened out. All right. See you later. Bye, fucking. told us that he had a nice date planned for Friday, but he was worried because he was a little under the weather when he was going on a first date with this uh, with this lady. The date, for all intents and purposes, went well, as chronicled here on the show. Yes. But there was a moment that Ben had to, like, duck off the street, happened to be by the radio station, came up to the fourth floor, and uh, the young lady went to the ladies' room, Ben went to the boys' room, Ben was hunkered down in the seated position while she's waiting out in the foyer outside of the restroom. And Ben's like, why don't you just go downstairs to the street level? I'll be down in a minute. Yeah, because that's happening. <sighs> I'm like, oh, God. There's... Have you... If I can hear yeah. her slightly moving her arms oh, to check her phone, I can, she everything. can hear me. Yes. So, oh, boy. <laughs> Thank. Now, this is big because she was around you at your worst. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, I pretty guess. bad. That's a pretty compromising position to be in. That's true. And so, but you're still talking, and apparently, there is there is there another date in the works? I mean, you guys hung uh, out last night, and we're hanging you? out on Friday. Really? Yes. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, man. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, but we had the story a few weeks ago. You remember that dude who went, similar situation, went on yes. a first date with a lady in England, situation. I believe it was. Now it's uh, words like configuration. Now I'm saying it like my dad, too. Configuration. <laughs> Penetration. Oh. <laughs> Gentleman uh, named Liam Smith went out with a lady. She goes to the ladies' room. Uh, she goes number two. And then, for some reason, it won't flush. She fishes it out. Because she didn't want it to be in there because she was freaked out that the guy... Oh, no! And then threw it out a window. But it was actually a, a like two panes of glass yeah. separated by like a foot and a half. Yeah. And the window, it was only open way on the top. And so it, it goes through the first pane and then boom, <laughs> the second one plops down, visible for the world to see the guy. Oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, now I'm in even more trouble. She admits to the guy what happened. He's like, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. Uh, he leaves to go try to figure something out. Well, she, I thought he helped her. I thought he was holding her legs as she maybe that was it. climbed it's all, it's into the window. foggy to me. Somehow she gets stuck, yeah. though. And Or maybe you're right. Maybe he, I thought he maybe stepped left, out. and then he was trying to actually pull her That's out once she was happened. already stuck. Yes, yeah. she was already stuck. Head first, upside down. It was a huge viral story. Once that made the rounds, a lot of people started to comment about the same thing happening to them. A paper called the Plymouth Herald shared the story on Facebook. Uh, a lady named Sharon Burgo Stouffer said she knew someone who had disposed of their poo through a bathroom window as well and had interrupted a family barbecue. Um, this is uh, overseas. Lad takes new lady to meet the family. She 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 done the deeds and toilet wouldn't flush. Retrieved the substance, wrapped Uh-oh. it in, wrapped it in tissue and threw it out the window onto a joining field. She recalled, only it didn't quite land there. It landed on the conservatory where a family were having a barbecue. Oh, no. She added that the mother of the family thought a bird had flown into the glass <laughs> roof. So basically, the turd is it would like on the you can see it through the ceiling of the glass conservatory. Yeah. Uh, so there was that one. Then there was this one. Uh, another person, Lee Anthony Gillard, wrote, OMG, this is a very st- similar story of an ex, apart from the poo, was wrapped in toilet paper and thrown out of the window but landed on the porch roof. 
The girl admitted, but with total embarrassment, when an elderly neighbor knocked the front door to say, hey, there's a dove stuck and in distress on the porch roof. And it's like, no, that's not a dove. Turd! What is up with all these people throwing yeah, it's almost the same out the window? exact story. Tessa Hayashi commented on a post by Junkie uh, saying she also knew a poo slinger. He threw it out the window, and it landed in the middle of the buffet table. She oh, added. no. <laughs> so the, the three people have thrown poo out a window. Uh, there's, uh, there was, there's. I just came to get something to eat. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I wish I had the uh, Ron Burgundy clip of, I will not eat the cat food. <laughs> eat that poop, Burgundy. <laughs> Um, there's also another one saying that, um, uh, this person went on a date with a guy and ate Mexican food, but it didn't sit well. I literally had the runs all night. The worst part was the only bathroom was, uh, had no door on it. So that was oh, weird. No, there's also a story of a lady called Maleka who ended up stashing her poo in her hand, in her purse <laughs> after realizing her date's toilet again, did not flush. Wow. She had to sit through the date knowing full well there was a there was poo wrapped in toilet tissue 10 feet away from the sofa. <laughs> like, what the? If there's one thing... Uh, Something smells really bad. Yeah. yeah. So, remarkable that those... that It's all similar stories. Yes. All right. Well, it has come to this. Uh, it's a bit that has been uh, being done on the radio. It came out... I actually... This is the one time that... Um, I came up with this idea in radio because a lot of the times the ideas, even the concepts of shows yeah. are just replicated over and over again. Right. Frankly, the first person to do this type of show was Howard Stern. Yes. I think it's credited to Howard for having this type of uh, vibe, if mm -hmm. you will. And um, more and more people have modified it and done it differently. But the one thing that I can actually claim that I came up with the idea. I didn't get it from another radio show. Yeah. I'll be the first one to tell you when I stole something from another radio show. Was P.A. Pranks. And uh, I was in Knoxville, Tennessee when I came up with it. And uh, I would go into whatever store in Knoxville and call the front desk and get a ridiculous name paged. Yeah, hey there. Uh, this is uh, Stephen Vanel. <laughs> And uh, my son, or my, my daughter, is there right now, and she doesn't have her cell phone, and we kind of have an emergency. I need to speak with her. Do you think you could page her on the PA system? Yeah, yeah. Last name V-A-N-U-L. Vanel. Yeah, Vanel. Uh-huh. Her first name is Isla. And then sit back and wait. Yes. And... Hundreds of times it worked out. And I took that bit to, to and then I en ended up shelving it for a period of time. Yeah. I took it to New Jersey, and then it kicked off again. And then I brought it to Michigan when I started my show across the street. And would you say it went, uh, like, it did well the first time, then did even better in New Jersey, and then did even better? Better. Here. Yeah, it just got more and more amped up, and right. it became and the problem. Though, I committed to every single Monday, we would have a new edition. Yeah, that is intense pressure if you don't have one in the can. Yeah, after doing one attempt, well, multiple attempts on one day, I can see how that is. Yeah, that you, would. Yeah, that would. I would be. It's, it's difficult to get just one. Right. And so. then, you know, it has to be perfect. Sometimes yeah. they'll mispronounce it, and then you're like, right. damn it, damn it, damn it. So, And uh, that sucks because then you have to go to another store. Yes, it's not you easy. Can't just, All, just getting up and driving is not, is not I mean, it takes a, it's a huge burden on time, yeah. and it's, it's a lot of pressure. So when it finally went away, it, there was a lot of reasons why it went away. It just uh, had run its course. A lot of people were in on it, so I was having difficulty getting people to do the pages. If I ever did it again, I wouldn't hold myself to once a week. But I'm not doing it again. 
It came up on the air here in this show, and Ben agreed that he would do it. And that got the ball rolling. We went out together. Ben and I went to the store together. And, again, we tried four on the first day. Yep. The very first one, which you're about to hear, was a huge success. Yes. But the entire time, you were convinced that this was not going to work, correct? Of course. And you'll hear in you'll hear the moment in the clip why I didn't think it was going to work. Okay. So, well actually no, you you'll well, I'll be able to pinpoint. I'll I'll elaborate. Yeah, well, on we'll, why we'll, I we'll elaborate it. after it's all done. So, here you go, ladies and gentlemen, back after many many uh years off, quite a hiatus. We bring you the Eric Zane Show's PA Pranks 2.0, The Ben Chronicles. Um, yeah, can I uh, be directed to customer service, please? I sound so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> ben was, all, like, all scared of being caught. Yeah. He got the Lion King playing in the background. Ben's got this big recording device. I was I was playing with a bop it in <laughs> yeah. the toy aisle while this was going on. Hi, yeah, um, I was just wondering, do you guys... Uh, do you guys page customers at all? Okay. You can actually hear her through your phone. Yeah, yeah my, says, yes. my dad forgot the grocery list at home, and he also left his cell phone, so I can't reach him. I was wondering if you could page him. Yeah. Uh, last name is J-A-B-L-O-W-M-E. And then uh, his first name is just Haywood. Haywood? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, now right there, she said, how do you say the last name? Yes. I could hear her say, how do you say the last name? You thought you were going to get away without saying it, right? Right. And you're thinking that as soon as you say it, she's going to know. And... You're about to hear, I have a hard time getting it out without <laughs> laughing. Uh, did you blow me? <laughs> yes, that's correct. Okay, thank ar- you. She's already said it to you. Okay, thank yes. you. You're thinking, well, she's going to know. And she, well, she's cause, just... Because she kind of, it sounded like she said the full name mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Like, Yeah, she said it. And in the middle of the first and last name, she kind of chuckled. Okay. So I was All like, right. ah, crap, uh, yeah. she's we're, onto we're it. Done. Here we go. That's her said all my customers. Can I say that Haywood hey, Jabot me to customer service, please? Haywood hey, Jabot me to customer service. <laughs> what? <laughs> you serious? You gotta be kidding me. When she, when she made me pronounce the last name, I thought, there's no way. <laughs> Oh, oh. Wow, again, again. This is uh <laughs> That's just all my customers. Can I say that hey what did you blow me to customer oh. service, please? Hey what did you blow me to customer service? <laughs> Dude <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> when, she, when she made me pronounce the last name I thought there's no way. Yeah. Dude, I gotta go with you again. I, that's yeah. fun. That is really fun. That is. It's, we it's, should get together Sunday and do it again. It's very nerve wracking. Yeah. But that moment. Oh my God. Man. As soon as you hear the yes. music stop on the PA yes. and the voice come on. Yeah. It is nothing but excitement. Oh, you're thinking, please say it right. Please say it. Please. Say it. That's just said all my customers. Can I say that Haywood hey, Jabot me to customer service, please? Haywood hey, Jabot me to customer service. <laughs> Plus, 
she did it so quickly. Like I hung up. With, <laughs> yeah, I know. I hung up with her. I and know then, it. Like, one or two seconds later, well, she's. I hope you all enjoyed it. that. We're back with that bit. <laughs> that is exciting. I'm very, very happy to hear that. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, maniacs, the loonies, and ding-dongs. Some people would say that we're the crazy ones, but I think we're geniuses because we're crazy enough to try to change this ding-dong crazy world. I mean, Ian, that was awesome, yes? It was fun. See? It's fun. It was it was fun and cartoonish and silly for what it was. Goodbye. Oh, boy. That's awesome.